When Steel Talks, everybody listens. I've been in this business for 37 years, baby. I would never run a steel band. Under, under extreme circumstances, like you make a million and you say, by the way, I have a little 15 man sign. I want you to hang on to that for me. I do that. All the worries must be yours. <laughs> <laughs> you just give me the, the players, this is 15 people. Put this money in escrow. Um, you're entitled to a salary every week. You get four, five hundred dollars a week. This your, you stay here. This is your transport person. This is your phone. That's all I want. I don't want this band to play anywhere be under three months. They must not come out of the basement or wherever for three months. Everybody must come to rehearsal every day. I can job. At the end of three months, you have one of the best three bands you ever had in your life. But you see, just walking into a party out where, you know, too many different entities to deal with. You have the people who, and this is the most dangerous people, the people who have been in the band for a long time, those are the ones that give the trouble. This, this, this band thing, the winning thing, actually, winning panorama, which is the least of the things for me, is one of the things that, that prevent bands from running smoothly. Not winning, they want to win Panorama. Panorama. That bands they all started up. They have people who can't even stand properly behind the instrument. And they want to win Panorama. There's a band in Dingo Martin called Merry Toes. Yeah. One year they went in the small band category and won. I mean like won. The following year, Enters in the big band category. You're stupid. You're stupid. You're assuming that you're going to come to beat Panam and to beat me and to beat Robert and to beat Jit. You have a little small band, keep it, you know, stay there. You win. You're winning. You're a winner in your category. But you want, I don't know what, what are you looking for? Because if I have a small band and I win in that category, I'm going back in small band next year. They had to beat me. But you're in a small band category and then all of a sudden, because you want a small band, you want to go and compete against the large bands who have a budget of small band mm -hmm. category, and then all of a sudden, because you want a small band, you want to go and compete against the large bands who have a budget of three quarters of a million dollars. <laughs> budget has a lot to do with it. Because yeah. without that money, you, you can't, can't get the proper pants. You can't, you can't get a class arranger. Yeah. You, you, you don't have the, the charisma. But you buy a lot of money. Nobody hangs around. Nobody loaf in your pan. Yeah, Once you see you, you have money, people come around. We have a young arranger here. He's following your footsteps. Who tell you he's young? <laughs> <laughs> no he can't even have a blue paper. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say to him? I say to him, you're climbing a very steep hill. And if you don't have the constitution, Forget it. Because the music that you're doing is the least of your work. It's the least, if you're talking about hard work, the music that you have to do is the easiest part of it. I, let me tell you that. I could, go, I could do panorama tunes all year. I could do music all year long, night and day. But to deal with the people is the harder part. The tough part, very tough. Even the little small thing. All right, I'll give you an example. In this country, I go to a party a couple of nights ago. The people in the building over there, they don't like pan music or whatever. They start raining bottles and stones into the pan yard. A woman gets hit in the chest with half of a brick. And they call the ambulance, call the police. The music went down beautifully. And that happened. The next night, that's last night. They got this band to split in two, Desperados. Half of the band is Desperados, half of the band is Rados. But the Desperados people and the Rados people don't seem to be able to agree. 
so they don't fight in the pan here last night. Who's pan here? Rallos? Rallos pan. That's not that idea. Pantone, even where we are, they throw, they throw um, bottles and stuff in the building. And the police will come at 10, 10, 30. And then there's the usual drunk for the hood when they come in front of the bank. And, you know, he doesn't want to move and everybody takes it as a joke. You try to get something done. And this is this drunk man making all kind of antics and distracting the kids that music. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have to deal with that. The easiest part for me, and will be for you, will be the music. You have to learn to shield yourself from these things. Not get angry. So, so how do you shield yourself from this? <coughs> you only go in front there when you're going to do the work and hide yourself. Don't stay out there. So people get too used to it. Don't make no, don't go in the pioneer to make no friends. When you go to the pioneer to make friends, you're in trouble. When you go there to make music. Because once you start to make friends, beware of the guy. You walk into the pioneer, especially for the first time. There's this one or two guys who would come and try to be overly friendly with you. Watch them. Then the man might want to tell you what to do and he don't want to do the pan. <coughs> yeah, that is usually the least talented <laughs> person. Anybody in the panel who talks a lot about himself is not good. He wouldn't be a good player. He wouldn't be a good person to teach music to. You have to go with the humility. You have to go with the humble person, the quiet person, especially women. I much rather work with women than with men two reasons. One, biologically, women's bodies are more suited to playing them. And they? They're more flexible. You don't know? No. Um, women's limbs are more flexible than men. Women's wrists are more suited to... Well, I haven't seen this in a book, a no book or anywhere, right? But biologically, women's Limbs are more flexible. You married fellas should know that. <laughs> but uh, men's men's wrists are sort of stiff. You see, for them. You look at it on the video. You watch the video and see, especially the bass players, and you can see it. And they are more apt to take instructions. Women like to take instructions. They want to learn, but the guys want to come. They don't know, but they don't want, don't want anybody to know that they don't know. Another thing is, women do like to, men do like to take music from women or from younger people. People, yeah, they feel very. But so they played for a long time. Yeah, he played the pan forty-two years. So how this little sixteen-year-old kid could come and give them the music, whereas in fact the sixteen-year-old kid can really play better than Now the way, this is a very important thing, point I'm going to make here. To make it easy for everybody, the players should all learn to read a little bit of music. They should know some theory, right? It will be easier for everybody. Now, this is what's going to happen. You have a band here with, say, 15 people, and majority of youths, and they have about six or eight of the older guys. You want everybody to learn to read music. You're not going to get them older guys to go home with no manuscript paper and practice that. Them older guys ain't doing that. I can't see myself getting my people crawl. You can get them guys to go home and do homework. No, they don't want to learn to read no music. They've been playing pan for 30 years without reading. Music. So why should he learn to read now, Gordon? That's an ultimate when he went to his Christ. <laughs> 1969. And he was the leader of one of the top bands, right? Yeah. Top bands playing guitar. He yeah, was the bull. He comes to me and he says, I would like you to arrange some music to play on the road. So certainly. And when I go down to the band, he has slush punk playing trombone. Yeah. Something like that. And nobody reads. So I said, this is the captain of the band. I said, son, how, but we need to write music for, 
for you to play, and nobody's reading. I mean, if I write, nobody will read it. You see, but that doesn't by heart. You kidding? I see, you crazy. It's kind of something I was teaching people to read music by heart, and you carry, and that's when going inside to learn to read. Yeah. Then, in 1969. And by 1980, 1970, he was one of the most prolific guitar players in the town. Every session in the studio, it's Gordon because he read it now. See, and now you, you understand me. I'm glad he taught to me. I didn't teach him to read. I didn't have to learn to read. Now you can't get half of them still by the guys. So what you have to do is to go and like Pelham, you're lucky you can play all them pants. I can play none. <laughs> you go on the pan and show him pum 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 book she does that, Robert does that. But we ain't doing that. I was asking Pelham about that, you know, coming you know, Well, what I really asked him about how do you why does the panorama tune have to take so long to do? Because I saw in an interview uh this was about the year he won Panorama casting, he said they did the song in like two weeks. Yeah. And they won. Yeah. That was two years ago I think. So yeah, that was I heard him say that, you know, I really thought about that, you know, why does the Panama tune have to take so long? One of the things that I mentioned, he said that the players, the skills of the players, and now here you're talking about people learning to read. That will speed the process. Of course, yeah. and it wouldn't cost that much. Yeah. If I spent two months in the pine, they pay, okay, I can tell you why. I get paid $50,000 for my job. That's what I was. I could finish that in two nights. I could, do, I could do that panorama tune in two days if I have people who know what they're doing. I've done a panorama tune in three days, party tonight. Mm. I did that in three days. Because it, it was, it was in, I, I, as a matter of fact, I did some shortcut work. You, you did the arrangement with Despers in three days? Three days. Did the band take three days to play the song? Yeah. yeah. And they don't read? No. <laughs> but you see, uh, I had to make some adjustments in the methodology. Um, a steel band has how many sections? Tenors, double tenors, seconds. Let's go down. Guitars, bass, tenor, bass. Some of these bands have six pan, cellos, cello, three pan, quadrilles in the middle. They're hybrid pans, all in the middle. Mm. And as a musician, conventional musician, one tends to, to, to regard the steel band as a transposed brass band. Okay? Now, bass and tenor bass is two basses, two different sections. I usually used to use the tenor bass to do other things besides what the bass is doing. So when we were doing parties and nights, and we had that short time, I decided to marry the two, never thinking about the scientific implications. But there are. And the bass pans, the larger notes, don't have much sustain. When you hit a large note on a bass band, it goes boom, dies. Because the diaphragm is it's too big, it's, you know, it doesn't even keep vibrating for a long time. So you find bass notes in steel band are almost non existent. Because you have a bass drum going boop, 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 on top of your bass. You have a conga man going, so the bass really doesn't really mean too much. So I, I put a tenor bass onto the bass. I make them both play the same thing. So naturally you'll come, you have a bass, which is the six or nine or twelve, which I, I just see where it is, plus the tenor bass on top of it. So the tenor bass is what provides the sustain. Mm -hmm. So it gives the ear the impression that there's one bass playing. There's really the tenor bass and the bass in the system. So when I was doing parties tonight, because of the short time, I married those two and found it a very a great improvement in the sound of the bass. Mm -hmm. So since then I have always done that. Right. So at the bass and tenor bass, I remove a whole section. Then in that, within the bass and tenor bass, you have to get a guy who can take and retain. This is where the problem is. Because when you give a guy some music tonight, and you come tomorrow night, and he either didn't come Oh, you forget what you did last night. You in real trouble. Because most of the time, I don't write no music to Chris Pania. You know the progression. 
So when I go in there, I get some vibes from the people who there, I smoke a joint, whatever, 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 drink a beer. And your brain is in a certain state. And you do the music off of that. Tomorrow night, your brain is not there. So don't come and ask me to do what I did last night. I can't remember what the hell Maybe. I did last night. I don't know what I did. I really can't remember. I'm depending on you to remember. And anytime you don't remember it, I'm I will do the right cause. But I might do the wrong, the different versions, and I don't get the same feeling that I got last night. See? So all of that is what uh, keeps you back. But once you have people who are on, yeah, yeah. they're on. Some guys could take a whole part of my tune in a night. Notes. I've seen a girl from Pandemonium come to Separia. Do what the tunes I was doing the tune there. The girl comes. She came at two o'clock and when it was half past three she had the, the whole tune. What we do, we have like section section. Section leaders. And everybody have a section practice. We like in the evening time. Mm. All the guitars and the cellos will have their pra their practice. The tenor bands will have their practice. The basses will have their practice. So nice. when I come in the night now, everybody remember what we did. Yeah, that 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 that, 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 that is very good. Yeah. When still talks, everybody listens. listens.